Hey guys, welcome back to Think Making. I'm Anton and today I'll share with you my experience with the Cetus 3D Extended. So let's get to it. Okay, this is the first 3D printer review I've ever done, but that doesn't mean I'll go easy on this 3D printer. There are more reviews like this one to come, so I'll try to be as objective as possible. I will also focus on four main things. Setup, build quality, software, and print quality. Also considering the intended market for this printer, because I would expect different from a $5,000 professional printer and a $200 printer meant for kids. Also since I got this printer, the MK2 version has been released. Because I know the changes that have been made to it, I know it will perform just like this one. Okay, now that you know that, let's get started by who is Cetus 3D. Well, believe it or not, they are actually a successful Kickstarter. And no wonder why. They are actually a child company of Tier Time, a much larger 3D printer manufacturer that makes amazing printers. So good things can be expected from a Cetus. Cetus also takes a very simple approach to 3D printing. For them, it's all about making the 3D printer and the 3D printing process as simple and easy as possible while still maintaining a great print quality. So, did they? Well, let's get started with the unboxing and setup. And it was so damn simple. The printer comes very well packaged with a lot of foam, along with many accessories and tools. As you can see, most of the printer comes pre-assembled. It also includes three sample spools of filament, a spatula, some pliers, a couple of wrenches to change the nozzles or to use for assembly, an additional 0.2 and 0.6 millimeter nozzle, a long needle in case you need to unplug them, and a USB cable. I also chose a bundle that included an extra build plate, a full spool of filament, and three extra nozzles. It also comes with the hardware needed to assemble the spool holder, which can be done like in two minutes. Instructions are actually not included in the box, you can only find them in their website. And being a Chinese company, eh, they're kind of terrible. Not the worst, but they could do much better considering how simple everything actually is. The printer itself requires very little assembly. In my case, I just had to screw in the belt plate to the Y carriage and the extruder to the X carriage, as well as connecting the necessary cables to the extruder. However, the new MK2 model also requires you to screw in the Z axis and the Y fin tenon to the base. But that's basically it. Easy peasy, right? And getting it printing is just as fast. First, you'll have to download the Cetus 3D software in your computer. Then, just turn on your printer and connect it to your computer with the included USB cable. In the settings section of the app, you'll be able to change its name and the Wi-Fi network it will be connected to. You can also turn on private mode, which will require a password every time you try to connect to it. After you do that, you can disconnect the USB cable and the printer will switch to Wi-Fi operation. To use the printer, you only select it and enter the password if needed. The next step would be to set the filament being used, load it up, and press extrude. The printer will start heating the nozzle, and when the temperature is reached, the extruder will catch on the filament and will start pushing it through. The next obvious step would be calibration, but due to how this printer is built, you shouldn't even need it. Yet, you still have the option. So the only thing missing would be to load up a bench sheet and start the print. If I hadn't been filming the whole process, I'm sure that I would have taken at most 30 minutes from the moment I opened the box to the moment I was printing. The setup was super easy, even with those terrible instructions. Now let's continue with build quality. And let me tell you, this printer doesn't fall short in this department. All the frame is made out of steel and aluminum profiles, making the printer very strong. In my model, there are a few pieces that are 3D printed, but in the new MK2 model, some were changed to injection molded pieces for better reliability. To prevent all this metal from damaging the surface it's on, it has some rubber feet. The Cetus team also managed to design this printer in a very space efficient way. Literally, every single millimeter on this printer is used for something. This makes the overall footprint of the printer very small in relation to its build volume, which can get quite big if you get this extended version that has a build volume of 180 by 180 by 280 millimeters. The motion system in all axes is high quality linear rails, which creates butter smooth and vibration free motion. There is absolutely no play in any carriage and tolerances are on point. All of the printer's electronics are housed in the bottom and passively cooled. It's powered by a 32-bit controller 
and the motors have a 1.8 step angle in case you care about that. And all the cable management is nice and tight. There are no free wires flying around. The extruder is a direct drive extruder with a very grippy gear that will push any filament through. It uses an all metal hot end with easily swappable nozzles. The cooling fan is quite loud but it also pushes a ton of air, which helps a lot in steeper angles and overhangs. The build plate is a solid piece of specially coated aluminum that is very grippy. Mine is not heated and although there is a heated version, I don't recommend it due to the fact that it doesn't quite reach the temperatures needed for ABS or other high temperature filaments. Which takes me to a very important point. This printer is mainly a PLA printer or for other filaments that don't require a heated bed like some flexibles. The new MK2 model also includes a Z-axis holder which prevents the whole Z-axis from dropping if there's a power outage. Now let's talk about the software. If you want the 3D printing experience to be easy, you also need to create easy to use software. And that is what the CETA Slicer is. It is available for Mac, iOS, PC, and hopefully in the future in Android. It is a super simple slicer and maybe way too simple. See, the thing is that the CETAS will work like a charm with its own software and is now supported by Simplify 3D, which is very complex. However, Simplify 3D costs about half as much as this printer, and the CETAS is meant to be very straightforward. So I will evaluate its performance based on its own software, not something else that I'll have to be tweaking. So back to its own software. It is super simple. There is a section where you can choose the filament you are using, a section for maintenance that is basically for switching the filament or nozzle width, a section for calibration, a button to initialize the printer, aka home the printer, a button to load the model, a section to resize, mirror, or move it around, and more importantly, a section to choose your print settings. And look at how small this section is. You barely have control over how the model is printed. There's no way of changing perimeters, you're stuck to three, nor top or bottom layers, no true vase mode, limited inflow percentages, and this list could keep going for like a lot. It is similar to that beginner mode in Cura, the point here being to reduce user error while setting up the print. Yet there is one thing I think is just way too much. Even if you disable supports, if the slicer believes there should actually be supports, it will create its so-called smart supports. This will be created only until a certain height, like 3 centimeters, I think. But that's still against your will. I really don't like that because in some cases it might even harm your print, like I'll show you later. So for a more advanced user like me, I strongly believe there should be an advanced option that you can enable to tweak your prints even further without the need of additional software. This slicer doesn't have a layer view either, which can come in very handy to spot slicing mistakes that you may have not seen in the solid view. I've been told by their team that they're working on it, but I didn't get a release date. Finally, if I need to be very picky, the software is quite slow. And I don't mean only the slicing process, I mean the whole UI. But that's nothing a software update shouldn't be able to fix. Slowness apart, for a beginner, there actually aren't much negative things about the software. It's kind of dummy proof, which for a beginner is great, but for an advanced user, it leaves a lot of things out. And software usually affects print quality. So let's see how well the CDIS prints. My first print was a Benchy, and I just couldn't believe how precise this printer was. So I jumped right into the action with a 10 hour print of the sculpture. And the results were freaking amazing. Those linear rails and the outstanding cooling make it achieve incredible results in surface finish, bridging, overhangs, and more. Support structures are the best I've seen. They are easy to remove and due to a more dense top support layer, the supported area is printed perfectly. But remember those smart supports? Well, this model had supports turned off, but smart supports kicked in. Being a single perimeter vase, trying to remove it would break it. So see my problem with this feature? In most cases, it won't be a problem, but you do have to consider it. I also found the printer to be super reliable. I printed all the Star Wars collection by Flowalistic scaled up quite a lot. Each model took between 15 and 25 hours to print under the normal setting at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. But this dragon is the longest print I've done in my CETAs and my favorite 3D print so far. It's one of the dragons from Game of Thrones, also scaled up. It took 55 hours to print under the fine setting at a 0.1 millimeter layer height. And I simply can't explain how smooth and detailed the print is. 
I also printed this Buddha with the same setting and check out those tiny details. This printer prints perfectly. There is no doubt about that. All the retractions, accelerations, decelerations, everything is on point without you figuring out all the right settings. Both the accelerations and the decelerations along with the print speed are affected by the high, normal, and fine setting within the slicer. To see if there's a difference in print quality between the three settings, I printed the same model with each one. And really, I could barely tell the difference with these models. Yet, after quite some testing, I noticed that the fine setting would create smoother and more precise walls. See, I don't understand something here. If I try to move the Z-axis with my hand, I'm able to do it. And while printing a tall model, I can actually see the Z-axis vibrating. Yet, for some strange reason, all this motion doesn't directly translate to the print. Take this dragon for instance. I printed it at a 0.2mm layer height with fast quality and made it as tall as the printer could handle. I could see the z-axis moving, yet look at the model. It is perfectly smooth somehow. And this is the same for other models like the Darth Vader or the Stormtrooper. I have no idea how this printer is able to keep the models looking so nice even if they're tall and printed at high speeds. But whatever the reason is, I love it. I also tried making a small vase with a 0.6mm nozzle and I can confirm it works flawlessly. Plus those layer lines, oh my god, they look beautiful. Yet that's not quite the same story for the 0.2mm nozzle. In my case, it seems like the path is just way too small and the extruder doesn't have enough torque to push the filament through. Yet there's many users that have been able to print with this nozzle, but for reliability's sake, I'll stick to the 0.4 and 0.6mm nozzle. So in the looks department, this printer is able to print beautiful models with very small details super steep overhangs, great reliability, and outstanding surface finish. But I noticed something strange right away in my first print. The infill is done in a strange way. The infill has many gaps, which results in a weaker infill, and therefore a weaker print. That's why as for now, I don't print things that need to resist very strong impacts in my CETAs. Thankfully, this is something that could easily be fixed through a software update by the CETAs team. Finally, the build plate has a grippy coating. So there's no need for hairspray or anything like that. Yet, due to the fact that it has four screws in the center, you may want to offset your print from the center, use rafts, or you could sand off the little bumps that would be created if you print directly over them. Alternatively, you could apply some lock build over it. As of now, my prints have never popped off while printing, and removing the prints is very easy with included spatula. So after all my testing, I can conclude that the Cetus 3D is a super easy to use, reliable 3D printer aimed at beginners who don't want to be fiddling around with settings or much assembly. However, if you're an advanced user, you still have the option to use Simplify 3D and tweak your prints even further. In any case, it will achieve amazing results. Also, it is very compact, well-built, and won't break the bank. Wait, did I even mention the Cetus 3D starts at only $300 or $100 more for this extended version? That build quality and print quality at that price tag, it's definitely a steal. So this has been completely my opinion. If you think this could be your next 3D printer, I'll leave a link down in the description to Cetus 3D's website. If there is something else you want to know about the printer, leave it in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Also remember to tag ThinkMaking in Instagram or Twitter to get a chance to get your creations featured. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and smash that like button and if you loved it, feel free to support my channel through Patreon or by buying some cool t-shirts in my merch store, like this one. Links down in the description. If you don't want to miss any of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and to turn on those notifications. And if you're wondering what to watch next, check out this videos. Again guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.